And I preach the Bible. I don't care who believes what and what what's what. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what the Word of God says. I don't care how wild it sounds to you. I don't care how weird it sounds to you. You know, the weird crowd is the people that don't believe the book. That's the weird people. Amen. We're the same people. Take your Bible. And, uh, we're, we're continuing on the subject of what the Word of God does for a sinner. I got a couple more scriptures here on healing, and then we're going to jump in on what he does as far as upholding the believer and upholding the sinner. Let's go to Psalm chapter 103 first. Let's finish this on the healing. God's a healer. And Sister Carolyn, where are you at? We're going to get you up here uh, before the end of the service. I'm going to anoint you on behalf of Brother John. And we're going to pray for Brother John. Um, the Lord's already working. He's on the phone this morning. He said he's doing a lot better. So we, we had prayer the other day on the phone. And, and, and God's able to reach down there and minister to him. And he's going to continue to do so. Amen. God's not done with him yet. Psalm chapter 103. The Bible says in verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Now notice there in that verse there, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Your body don't want to bless God. It's your soul that has a connection with God. See? And then it says, All that is within me, bless His holy name. It's His holy name that you ought to bless. Not Muhammad's. Not Allah. Not any other uh, figment of the world's imagination that they put on a pedestal up here and elevate and glorify and exalt. It is the name of Jesus Christ that you ought to be blessing. Amen. We're not blessing Mary. We're not blessing St. Joe. <laughs> We're not blessing any of the gurus of the world, Confucius, Muhammad, Allah, um, whatever other name they want to come up with. We're going to bless the name of the Lord and all that is within us is going to bless His name. And it's not just His name, it says His holy name. Jesus Christ is a holy name, so you ought not to be using it as a profanity. You ought not to be using it as a cuss word. Amen. You ought to use that name when you're praying to him or talking about him. Period. I get so tired of these Christians running around and using the name of Jesus in a, a vain way. Like it's a profanity. And the world does it. And now the church world's starting to pick it up. Oh, preacher, you're just old-fashioned. Guilty. But I got an old-fashioned book that still stands the test of time. Amen. And I got a book that tells me that we're not to use the name of the Lord our God in vain. Amen. If you ain't praying to Him, talking to Him, or talking about Him, don't use His name in vain. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. There's some benefits to serving God. Amen. I'm saved today. That's a benefit. Amen. I'm in a Bible-believing church. That's a benefit. I got a Bible. That's a benefit. Don't forget it. Don't forget what God has done for you. Brother Chuck was reminding you this morning, even when you get sick, don't forget God. He's the only one that can bring you up out of the bed of affliction. Amen. You can go to the doctors and the doctors have their place. But I'm going to tell you, if God don't see fit to let you get healed, you won't get healed, buddy. You'll lay flat on your back. Amen. And you can be in the best of health and think you've got the world by the collar. And God can strike you down. Hello, Lisa Marie. <laughs> Hello, what's his name out there on that football field that fell out? Yeah, there you go. I'm going to tell you something, folks. God can strike you down anytime he wants to. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to have no health problems. I know people that got a clear bill of health from their doctor and a week later they're in the morgue. And they can't figure it out. See? 
You better bless the Lord all the days of your life. And remember, every day on this earth is a blessing from God and a benefit from God. And you ought to serve Him in it. And you ought to remember His name in it. And give Him praise and glory and honor in everything. Amen? Amen. The Bible says here, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. God's the healer and God is the forgiver. God's the one that forgives you of your sins, not man. Not that pot belly pig in Rome. Amen. Does that make you mad? I'll say some more. Hey, that, uh, that man in Rome and can't even forgive himself, much less forgive anybody else. He couldn't forgive a fly. Only God can. You turn to the Lord, you confess your sins to God. Amen. I know a lady right now, she goes to work and she talks like the devil. She, every other word out of her mouth is a profanity. She professes to be a devout Catholic. And she says, all i got to do is go to the confessional on Saturday night and uh, get in there and get all that stuff straight. And then on Sunday morning, take my Holy Communion. And then I'm just good the rest of the week and I live like I want to live. I said, sister, let me tell you something. Not only are you abusing the Word of God and the things of God, you're blaspheming God. Even as a Roman Catholic, when I used to be a Roman Catholic, I knew there was three things you had to do to make your confession good. You had to have a contrite spirit. In other words, you had to really be sorry for what you were doing wrong. That's number one. And number two, you had to have the mindset that you were going to make amends and change. And you had to confess it all, not leave anything back. And if all three of those things weren't meant, your confession didn't mean squat. I told her that. I said, you ain't fooling me, sister. I know your number. <laughs> and I'm calling it. And I may not be a Roman Catholic today, but I know what they teach. I'll tell you, you don't tell me. <laughs> I'll educate you on it. It's blasphemy when people think they can play around and play games with God. The Bible says, Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Now watch number five. Who satisfieth thy mouth with what? You got a Bible? Amen. Why don't you memorize it and start talking it? That will be the good things that God's talking about that He satisfies your mouth with. You know how to get rid of the garbage that you've been filling your mind with and CNN and ABC and CBS and all the other BSs that are out there? <laughs> all you got to do is get you a King James Bible and spend time in it and let the Word of God clean out all that toilet bowl junk you've been listening to all week. Amen. It'll clean you out good. It will get your mind transformed to where you see things the way they ought to be seen. Amen. And then when people say things to you that are contrary to the Scripture, you'll pick up on it. Case in point, my son back there, I appreciate him, I love him. And he let me know that he's paying attention to some things I've been teaching and preaching in this church. He went to a service and they were quoting out of a Bible that was garbage. <laughs> Because they say, they're my father's house are many dwelling places. Just throw that thing in the garbage, why don't you? That's not a Bible. That's a piece of trash that somebody put in there to pervert the Word of God. That's what that is. The Word of God says, in my father's house are many mansions. You can have a dwelling place if you want to. I'll keep the mansion, okay? Alright, I'll take the mansion. You can have the dwelling place. Amen. You want a room? You can have a room. I've got the whole body. <clears throat> i got the whole building, okay? And mine's gold. I don't know about yours, but mine's gold. <laughs> I've got a Bible that tells me what it is. It's a palace. Amen. Amen. Ain't no room. Ain't no dwelling place. I got a dwelling place here. Okay? And I, I appreciate my dwelling place here. But God says, in my Father's house are many mansions. And if you spend time in the Word of God, when people quote that thing wrong, you'll pick up on it like a light bulb. Amen. It won't bear witness with your spirit, not in the least. Amen. Amen. 
You go to King James Bible, you got the right one, and it'll satisfy your mouth with good things. The Bible says, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. When people get in the Word of God and spend time in that book, I don't know if you've ever noticed, when people get saved and get saved from a life of drugs and alcoholism and fornication and wickedness and depraved living, and they get in church and they get in the Bible and they start letting the Word of God work in their heart, their whole countenance changes. Their youth is renewed like the eagles. And God will testify to what he's doing inside of them by looking at their face. You can look at a person's face and tell whether they've been with Jesus or not. You sure can. I tell you every time you can. Amen. You can tell our crowd from the world. The world's got this complex look on their face. They're in distress all the time. They're looking at people through the eyes of fear and intimidation. But when you get saved, you look at the world through the eyes of Jesus Christ and you have peace and consolation. Amen. 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 Turn that frown around. (laughs) Put a smile on your face. I said to a man one time, I said, why don't you smile? I ain't got nothing to smile about. Well, find out about Jesus and you'll, you'll have something to smile about. Amen. Every Christian has something to smile about. Amen. The Bible says the Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chid, neither will he keep his anger forever, thank God. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, So great is his mercy toward them that fear him. That's the key. You got to fear God in order to reap the benefit. And we live in a society today that has no fear of God. They have no fear of the things of God. They make mockery of the things of God. They make fun of God and the things of God. You don't believe it? Go turn the night shows on at night time and watch Colbert and all the rest of them make fun of Christians. They're demon-possessed devils is what they are. Yes, they are, Pastor. Amen. Amen. They make fun of you day and night. To where when you walk out in public, Christians are afraid to even tell people they're Christians anymore. You're not one of them. I heard Jay Leno talk about you last night. I heard Colbert make fun of y'all last night. I was watching South Park and they had a whole episode on y'all. I'm going to tell you something, folks. God's going to have the last laugh. Amen. 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 He's going to be the one making fun of them in the end. Amen. Amen. You're on the right side if you're on this side of the cross. Amen. Amen. It's the people on the other side that's in trouble. And they laugh now, but they're going to cry later. Amen? I'm going to laugh now and laugh later. Amen? I'm going to have my laugh all the way down to the cross, on the other side of the cross, to the throne room. As I'm entering in my mansion, I'm going to be singing, I told you so! Amen. 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 I told you this is the way it's going to be. Amen. The Bible says, somebody said, well, God wouldn't do a thing like that. Sure he would. See, that's where people have stopped reading the Bible. Somebody said, God won't laugh at a sinner. Oh, yeah? Go to Proverbs chapter 1. Oh, it's place there. Preach a little while this morning. I'm sadistic when it comes to things like this. The Bible says here, everybody's got to have something to be sadistic about. I found the Bible to be that way about. The Bible says here, um, verse 24, chapter 1, Proverbs. This is God speaking. It says, because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Does that sound familiar today? Used to be people had respect for the ministry and the things of God. Now you talk to them about the ministry and things of God, they'll make you fun of you, they'll cuss you out, they'll run you out with a stick. They'll shoot you. They'll go in churches now and shoot up people. Amen. 
That's okay. We got some people here to shoot back. Amen. 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 We believe in the First Amendment in this church. Amen. <laughs> but I hope you know Jesus because you get ready to meet him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's what I tell them. <laughs> Amen. You say, uh, what a thing to say. Yeah, what a thing to say. You know what's, what's the problem in America today? If we got a bunch of panty waist Christians that don't know how to stand up for themselves and stand up for the Word of God. Amen. 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 This ain't that church. We we got a church full of men here that know how to do right and be right. Amen. 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 The Bible says here in chapter uh, one and verse uh, twenty four, because I've called and you refused, I've stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but you have said it not all my counsel and with none of my reproof. They close the Bible and say there ain't nothing to it. I look at verse twenty six and tell me what he says. I also will what? Laugh. That's the Lord talking. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Amen. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, then shall they call upon me. There's going to come a day, folks, when the trumpet is going to sound and the church is going to go up. And people in panic and in chaos are going to run to the churches and they're going to be calling on the Lord. And the Lord will not answer them. That's a dangerous place to be. Amen. You better call upon the Lord now while He is near. While He answers you. This is the day of grace and mercy. But there's coming a day, folks, when that grace and mercy is going to disappear and the wrath of God is going to be poured out. And then they're going to call on Him and He won't answer them. I went to a man, man, Sister Carolyn did. We went to a man one day and I warned that man. I said, you better get your heart right and get your act together, son, because you're messing with stuff that you ain't got no business messing with. And the Lord keeps knocking on the door of your heart and trying to get you right and you keep refusing. And I'm telling you, if you refuse today, God has drawn a line in the sand and he will not answer you after I leave this property. Amen. Amen. Had a spirit in him that looked at me in a mocking way and said, I'm right, I'm right. Everything's okay with me. And I knew he was p possessed with the devil. And I kept pleading with him. Me and Sister Carolyn both did. And we wept and we cried and we begged him, you need to get it right, you need to get it right. I walked off that property that day and I shut the dust off on my feet. And I said, Carolyn, we cannot pray for this man again. He's given over. Dangerous ground, folks, to get to that place. Saw him years later at a funeral. Man ran up to me, Brother Earl. He looked at me. He says, I know who you are. And he had a blankness stare in his eyes. And I knew who was talking. It was that spirit that had control over him. I said, I know who you are too. He said, I'm right. I'm saved. That's how they do it. Paul had a woman that used to follow him around. And she used to say, I know who these men are. They're servants of the Most High God. But it was a demonic spirit talking to them. And Paul got tired of hearing that. He went around and he rebuked the demonic spirit that was in her. And she fell on her face and the demon left her. I'm telling you folks, there's a religious spirit in the world today, but I'm not trying to get you involved in a religious spirit. I'm trying to show you there's a difference between the religious spirits of this world and a relationship with Jesus Christ and being right with God. There's a big difference between the two. Amen. The Bible says here in uh, Proverbs, it says, When your anguish, when your fear cometh as desolation, your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, and they shall not find me. Why? For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. A lot of people like that today. They go to church. They're religious. God didn't tell you to be religious. God didn't tell you that they wouldn't be in church. God said they wouldn't be able to believe. They rejected the Lord. There's another passage in John chapter 2 where he talks about that. 
Bible says he, he strove with them. He tried to get them to come to him and believe him for the miracles that he was doing. The Bible says that they would not believe on him. They would not believe. And there comes a day, folks, when God calls your name for the last time and he draws a number in the sand and a line in the sand and he says, if you don't receive me now, I'm shutting the door and it'll never open for you again. It didn't say you wouldn't be religious. It didn't say you wouldn't go to church. It says you could not believe and that's what John chapter 2 says about that crowd in the next verse it says though he done many wonderful works they would not and then the next verse it says they could not believe they could not believe that's a dangerous place to be I know people like that I know people like that that's scary if you're under the sound of my voice today and you don't know Christ, today would be the day. I get right. Amen. This verse here says in Psalm 103, back to Psalm 103. The Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, verse 12, so far hath thee removed our transgressions from us, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. You got to fear God, folks. You got to fear God. Healing comes as a result of you reading the Word of God and believing what God said where He said it. That's where healing comes. Jesus Christ is the Word of God incarnate. You're not going to get your healing from Gene Dixon. You're not going to get your healing from some psychic medium somewhere that you dialed a 900 number to get to. That's not where healing comes from. Healing comes from the blood atonement of Jesus Christ and He provided that for you. But the only way you can have access to that is to have access to Him. And the only way you can have access to Him is to believe on Him. Amen. 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 It's strange how people in churches all around us, me and Carrie can testify to this to you, we have people that are in other churches and other places and bigger churches and bigger organizations. And any time that they get sick, they don't call those people. They call us. See that thing? Somebody has got to have a direct line to the throne of grace and we got it. Amen. Amen. We don't put you on hold. It's in a three-way call, buddy. This is a direct line. And God answers the phone every time. Amen. 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 But you got to have that relationship with Jesus Christ. Now the next thing the Word of God does for us is He upholds us. How does He do that, preacher? Go to Psalm 51. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Psalm 51. The Word of God will uphold the sinner. Psalm 51, look at verse 10. The Bible says, Create, here's where it starts, in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. In order to be born again, you have to have a clean heart. Your heart is dirty. When you were born to your mother, you were born with an Adamic nature that was fallen, corrupt, and you can't help yourself. You cannot live a better life. You cannot do it on your own. You need supernatural help, and you need a new birth. Amen. That only comes through the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. Only the blood can make you clean. Your good works can't do it. You going to church can't do it. Paying your tithes can't do it. Shaking the preacher's hand can't do it. Getting baptized can't do it. Speaking in tongues can't do it. Only Jesus can do it. He's the one that makes a clean heart. And that is a result of you kneeling at the cross of Calvary and saying, Jesus, please save my wretched soul. And then He'll save you. The Bible says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. And, look at this, Renew a right spirit within me. It's spiritual circumcision that has to take place. 
cutting that body loose from that soul and putting a right spirit on the inside of you, that new man, that inner man that cannot sin before God because it's perfect and God seals it off with the Holy Ghost and then He protects it by His Spirit. Next thing. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And look at this. Uphold me with what? Thy free free spirit. Notice the word spirit there is not capitalized. So what could that be a reference to? It's a reference to the Word of God. Take your Bible and look at John 6.63 to see that. John 6.63 Aren't you glad you saved today? <laughs> Amen. Huh? I'm glad I'm here today. Amen. I'm going to tell you something, folks. People in our world today have it backwards. A lot of people are afraid of dying. I'm not afraid to die. Well, that's the best thing that could ever happen to you if you know Jesus. Don't you know that? Yes. I mean, you close your eyes in one minute, Brother Todd, and you're here on this earth, and you open them, and you're and you're nose to nose with Jesus Christ. The next thing you see is Jesus' face. Yeah, so Woo! I tell you what, buddy. Yes, sir. And I tell you, I would. I, I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to it. Amen. 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 And when Christians get to a place where they're scared to die. There's something wrong with them spiritually. Now, I understand you got concerns. You, you leave your family behind. You may have small children or that kind of thing, and you want to make sure they're taken care of. That's one thing. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about a Christian that says, I just don't know, preacher. Well, what here is holding you here? What is it that you put before God that's made it so bad for you? Hmm. Look at John 6.63. 6.63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit. And they are life. That's what he's referring to in Psalm 51 and verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. That's what you need as a Christian. And uphold me with thy free spirit. The word of God's free God has made access to His Word available anywhere you turn. You can get a copy of it. Amen. Amen. You don't have to go and uh, pay an astronomical amount. You can go and find it in any church in this. Well, let me take that back. (laughs) You can find it in a lot of churches. Okay? You can find it here. Amen. Amen. It's His free spirit. And when the Word of God gets on the inside of you, it will transform you. Go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Now we're going, we're going to speed it up a little bit. Psalm 119, 116. Chapter 119 and verse 116. The Bible says, Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Listen to me, folks. It's the word of God that will uphold you and keep you alive. You know why? Because the Word of God is alive. That's the most live thing you can ever get your hands on. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you something. When you're sick and you're feeling bad, the best thing you can ever do is spend time in that book and you'll be surprised at how quick you recover. I mean, that Word gets on the inside of you and begins to minister to you. And when you come in contact with life itself, you can't help but live. Nobody ever died in the presence of Jesus Christ. Have you ever noticed that in the Gospels? Nobody ever died in His presence, brother. They either died before He got there or they died after He left. But nobody ever dropped dead in His presence. Have you ever noticed that in the Gospels? And anybody that he came in contact with that was dead came alive. You know why he tarried three days, four days, whatever it was, for Lazarus? 
Lazarus was sick, and Martha sent word, Hey, my brother's sick. I need you to come and lay hands on him and get him well. And Jesus, the Bible says, he tarried for a few days. You know why he was tarried? He wanted to make sure he was good and dead. He knew if he got there too early, he'd stay alive. He wanted him to die so he could show the crowd that he's the resurrection and the life. He wanted to make sure he was so dead that he started stinking. So when he got to that tomb, buddy, he had been dead a while. Four days. And when he got in there, he said, come forth. And death has to obey God. I don't care how dead you are. You get in the presence of Jesus Christ, you're going to come alive or you're going to get out. You ain't going to stand still. <laughs> Promise you. That's why I tell people about this church. When people come into this church for the first time, they're trying to figure out what in the world they've walked into, but there's one thing about it. You're either going to get in or get out, but you ain't going to stay neutral. Amen. <laughs> You're going to get stirred up or stirred out. Amen. Amen. This, this book will stir you up or make you mad. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The Bible says His Word will uphold you. Look over here at Proverbs 29.23. Proverbs 29.23. Proverbs 29.23. We'll probably have to let this one be the last one for the day and then we'll pick up there next week. 29.23. Proverbs 29.23. A man's pride shall bring him low. I want you to think about that for a minute. You know what keeps people from being saved? Pride. I don't have to listen to that preacher. I don't have to go to that church. I don't have to read the Bible to be saved. I can do it my own way. Ask Frank, if you could bring Frank Sinatra back now, he'd tell you something different. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't sing that song no more. I did it my way. You sure did, and you wind up in hell. I told y'all the story about Hank Williams Sr. He wrote the song, I Saw the Light, I Saw the Light, and one day it was riding with his limo driver, and his limo driver was trying to cheer him up. He could tell it. He was having a bad day and he was sitting over in the corner of the back seat there staring out the window and he was trying to cheer him up so he started singing that song. I saw the light, I saw the, I saw the light, Frank. Oh, Hank. And Frank, uh, and Hank looked at him and gritted his teeth and he said, there is no light. There is no light. That's a man that's singing about something that he knows nothing about. And that's a man that's void of the truth and void of the Holy Ghost. And when the time came for him to die, he died without Christ. And dropped off into hell. And there he is right now. And he's exactly right. Where he's at, there is no light. That's right. That's it, brother. Honor shall uphold the humble. That's what the next part of this verse says. You get your honor from your humility. Honor comes with humility. You must humble yourself before God. The Bible says, humble yourself before your God and He will exalt you in due season. He will bring honor to you when you bring honor to Him. And that's what I'm going to leave you with this morning. The Word of God will uphold you. But it will not uphold you if you don't believe and trust what it says. You must give your heart to Him. And you must submit to Him in all His ways. And fear Him. And let Him work in your heart. The way we get a clean heart is humble ourselves at the cross and say, Lord, I'm dirty. I need a good bath. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. And He will. And you'll come up cleaner than you've ever been. Amen. And you'll stay clean. Yeah. Amen. Let's close in prayer right there. Father, thank you for your blessings today. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. 
I pray you take these words that we've said today and let it prick the hearts of those that are here. And Lord, if there's anybody right now under the sound of my voice that doesn't know Christ as their Savior and needs to be saved, I pray you touch them right now. Stir their hearts. While your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, just real quick, just want to ask a question. I, I do this from time to time just to gauge everybody spiritually and give you a chance. Is there anybody here today that don't know Christ and wants to say, Preacher, pray for me? I don't know the Lord, but I need to get saved. Could you pray for me? Can I see him? Anybody? Anybody here not saved today? All right. Preacher, I'm saved, but I've strayed away and I need to pray. I need you to pray for me and I'll get back where I need to be. Can you pray for me, Preacher? I see that hand. Yeah, I see that hand. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Father, I pray for those hands that were raised today, Lord, that you'll minister to those people. Restore them, Lord. Restore the joy of their salvation to them, Lord. Get them back to a place where they need to be in Christ and minister to them by your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sister Carolyn, come up here for a minute. We're going to anoint you in oil on behalf of Brother John. And then uh, we've got one more thing we're going to do and then we'll close. Brother Earl, come on up here. Brother um, Chuck. Amen. Y'all come up here and let's uh, let's gather around Sister Carolyn and pray for her.